Hi, I'm Dr. John Chovic, and I'm the CTO of SwitchDoc Labs. And what we're going to be doing in this series is using your Raspberry Pi to measure a variety of things about plants, both with ground, regular dirt-based um, agriculture, as well as doing hydroponics. And we're going to start out with our first part. We're going to talk about soil moisture. Now, soil moisture is a measurement of how much water is in the soil. Obviously, planks like soil or like water in their soil, but they don't like too much water, and they certainly don't like too little. So let's show you what this equipment looks like. Okay, you see right off to the screen there, you see a Raspberry Pi with a Pi to Grover on top of it. This allows you to easily plug in various devices into your Raspberry Pi without any soldering or taking the chance of blowing up your Raspberry Pi or the device or something. And right above it, and I'll move this just over to the side here, right above the Raspberry Pi is kind of a magical little device. This is a very inexpensive soil moisture watering device. It's very simple. It's got a Grove play, uh, plug on this end. And what we do with this device is we push it into the soil, as you can see with some of the other pictures later on. You push this into the soil, and it measures the amount of water. Now, the real question is, how does it do that? Well, turns out it's a very, very simple device. It measures the amount of current that moves from this pin to this pin. Now, turns out water, especially when it's got minerals and things in it, like it does in soil, is conductive. The more water in the soil, the more conductive it is, all the way up to when you hit, when you put it in pure water, again with some minerals, distilled water is not conductive. If you have a vat of distilled water, it's not going to show anything. But normal water that has some minerals in it and whatnot is very conductive. And water in your soil is also conductive. So by measuring the voltage, measuring the current across these two tabs, we can look at that and measure it as a voltage. We put it through a voltage converter. And uh, what we do, we look at the higher the voltage, the less, uh, the more current that is flowing, and therefore, the higher connectivity. So the higher the voltage we see across these two pins here, the higher the voltage, the more water is in, and we can measure that. So that's pretty cool. This is a very inexpensive device, and we've got all these devices listed at the end of this video if you want to fool around with it. But there's some tricks to this, and that's what I want to talk about today. Okay, first of all, you plug this in your soil, what do I do? Well, first of all, the Raspberry Pi, our friend here, does not have an analog to digital converter in it because we have to measure the voltage on this signal. Remember, it could be one volt, it could be two volts, it could be 2.3 volts, all the way up to five volts. Now, it's proportional to the moisture. So if you go all the way to five volts with this thing, you've got 100% moisture if it's, uh, and so on and so forth as you move down. If you get no conductivity at all, it's essentially 0% moisture. As with many devices like this, it's not highly accurate at the type end or at the high end. If you want to do 98% moisture, you're probably not going to be measured with this. If you want to go down to 0% moisture, you're probably not going to be able to use this either. But anything in between, like where plants like to sit, somewhere around 65% is the number we use, it works really well. You can measure that soil moisture, and then with some of the systems we've built, our smart, garden, our smart gardening system, for example, you can actually water the pan appropriately depending on the moisture sensor here. So how do we convert this voltage here across these two pins to soil moisture? Well, what we have to do is we have to take this analog voltage, that's the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4.5 volts and all that. That's called an analog voltage. We need to change it into digital, which are numbers, you know, with ones and zeros, like uh, we might change uh, five volts into 1024. And then we have two and a half volts, it'd be half that, 512. Turns out we're gonna be using a 16-bit analog to digital converter, which means we convert five volts into roughly 65,000. And if you have it down uh, to 2.5 volts, it comes out about 32,000. But that's the, it's the same general principle. The Raspberry Pi does not have an analog to digital converter on board, so we need to add one of those. This is what it looks like. Now you notice these white plugs on everything, and what are those? Those are actually Grove connectors that allows us to plug things together very, very easily and without uh, possibility of shorting and adding things up to the box of death. 
not good. So we're going to be using this. This is a four channel 16 bit analog to digital converter. And it's the missing board for the Raspberry Pi. <coughs> now what we're gonna do here is you see I just take this plug, this Grove connector, plug it right into uh, channel zero it turns out. We take the other end and plug it into our um, soil moisture indicator. Then we would take another plug and plug in here. This is the I squared C bus that connects to the Raspberry Pi. And finally, into the Raspberry Pi itself. And there we have it, all connected, all ready to put this in your soil and measure the temperature. Of course, we have some software which you can find um, up on uh, Switch Stock Labs as well as other places to change that, that you know, zero to 65,000 into soil master percentage. But it's a very, very simple piece of software that allows you to do that. Well, so it looks like we're done. Well, not quite. Here's the problem. Now, if you remember your basic, uh, pause this right here, I dropped uh, what I needed. If you remember uh, basic chemistry and whatnot, if you apply a voltage across um, two different conductors, they use this in refining and things like that, it causes the metal to migrate from the plus to the minus. So what happens if you put on um, a voltage on this all the time, these eventually, the metal goes from this one to this one. And guess what? You end up with something like this. Now here's a one that we left the voltage on for a long period of time, and you can see the copper is completely gone here, and you know, of course, there's still copper over here. So what happened? We had voltage applied the entire time, and you plug this in for a week or so, that's what happens. The metal all migrates from one to the other. Well, and then, you know, your, uh, this is pretty well ruined. It's worthless. So, what's the magic here? I don't want to replace the soil moisture sensor every, you know, every few days, every couple of weeks. It's too expensive. They're only like four or five dollars a piece, but still, it's too expensive. So we need to do something else. And here's what we do. We end up, actually, now, we're going to add another component in here, and it's called a Grove Power Save. Now what that does, it allows us to turn the power off to a Grove device. And it kind of works like this. We're going to plug this in here. I'm just going to show you how this wired together. We plug that in there. I plug this into the soil moisture detector. And then I take this cord and plug it into the, um, the part that goes to the Raspberry Pi, or not the Raspberry Pi rather, but the analog to digital converter. And now we have something different. Now, understand that this Grove power save acts as a switch. And we plug a third Grove cable right into the middle here. And then we can use that to actually control the Raspberry, control the switch with the Raspberry Pi, such that we turn the power off when we're not using the soil moisture detector. Now, see we have that plugged in, it plugs over here into the Raspberry Pi. And you know, we can talk about that in a bit. Now, what we've done here is now we have a switch between the power, which comes from the Raspberry Pi through the cable, and the soil moisture detector. Remember I told you that the metal will migrate from one tip to another if you have power applied. So, and it lasts a couple of weeks. Well, here's what we do to make this a high reliability, long lasting, inexpensive moisture sensor, is we only turn the power on with this switch here when we need to measure. It only takes a fraction of a second to measure. So once an hour, once every 10 minutes, or once every 20 seconds, whatever, we turn it on for about a half a second, make the measurement, and then shut it, set, shut it off. That means if you're measuring once a minute, it's only on for half a second in that minute. So it will last approximately, uh, what, 120 times longer. So now instead of a couple of weeks, you get most of a year. And if you only measure once, a, uh, once an hour, well, then it's only like, it'll last 3,000 or 7,000 times longer because the metal will not migrate from one to the other side unless you have a voltage applied. So that's the magic to making these inexpensive soil sensors 
last for practically forever, is you have to put a little switch on it. A little switch that turns the power off except when you're making the measurement. So we end up with these nice soil sensors rather than these ones that have had the copper all etched off from one side to another. So there you have it. Let's kind of review that. You use a soil moisture detector like this, a growth soil moisture detector, and you plug that into the soil. You plug that into a little switch that is controlled by the Raspberry Pi, and then you plug the other end into the analog digital converter, which measures the voltage and converts it to digital numbers, which then the Raspberry Pi, with a very simple equation, translates that to the percent soil moisture you have, and then you can get some good stuff. Now, I want you guys to look at this picture, and this picture shows our uh, latest smart gardening system showing all the different percentages of the five soil um, the five soil sensors we have, all controlled by these little switches. And also, here's the main screen, which gives you graphs and everything else that's going on with your garden. So we're actually using this technology in our product, so we really do know it works. We developed this on-off technology to make these inexpensive soil sensors last a long time, and they're called the High Reliability Soil Moisture Sensors on our website. And you can, uh, you can see them there. So, that's it. That's all it takes to measure soil moisture. Now, the smart gardening system we use handles up to nine of these soil moisture sensors, all placed in different plants, and then we have them wired to individual pumps, which we'll talk about later, and so you're only watering the plant how much you should water it to keep it the optimal percentage. So we're making our plants grow better and not get dry and automatically watering these plants so you can keep those plants alive. So anyway, there you have it for measuring soil moisture with the Raspberry Pi. I can't wait till our next time when we're going to talk about measuring the amount of sun on your plants, again, by using the Raspberry Pi.